systems for you and try to standardize a make a system that's embedded that's easier to manage. Mm -hmm. so, so in this case they moved to Android and more and more companies that used to say we you know we are based on Linux and everything they find out that they can get loads more features and everything maintained for them by other companies if they move to Android, which isn't exactly the same as Actually, I'm not, I'm not sure you, if you know the answer. I, I think that, it, at least in the early days, Android was also based on something to do with Monte Vista, or at least had some uh, some other company working with them on a better maintained uh, distribution of Linux. But, no. I mean, all, all I was going to mention about the Amazon tablet, I, I think it's fascinating because Amazon are in a position to vastly... Uh, Reduce the price of their uh, of their tablet. In fact, even take a loss, like it's been suggested. I think it was fifty dollars was uh, suggested the loss for each unit, and uh, the, in a position to do that on the reliance that people will use their uh, services and other products buy their other products in order to make up the deficit, as it were, uh, a little bit like how the console gaming market works, where when they first release, they're uh, at running at a loss, and uh, they're relying on games and the licensing from the games that people buy, and it does make me wonder. We've I think last show or the show before last, we talked about Windows 8, and that's going to be the the tablet ready allegedly uh, version of Windows, which Microsoft's going to be pushing out in apparently about 12 months. That's what they said about Windows. Yes, yeah, seven. So, uh, well, I mean, yeah, it wasn't just sub notebooks. So yeah, they were talking about tablets. If, well. I mean, if we say that's the case, and in 12 months' time, Windows 8 is uh, flopped on the shelves, it's going to be competing with horrendously cheap tablets like the one from Amazon and. The more mature, uh, more mature Linux uh, tablets that are already going to be on the market and already popular with consumers, and this is have loads of applications. Really. Yeah, and it doesn't have any, almost yeah. any. I mean, I, I wrote an article recently, uh, like like tablet, like uh, well, I put like father, like son, and it was like phone, like tablet, and it was <laughs> highlighting the similarity between the tablets and the smartphones where when Microsoft finally does get to the, the point of releasing something on the scene to try and compete, people have moved on people have got other products and everybody else has got the more mature platform and Microsoft yeah. is struggling in, in, the, in the mire as it were so it's going to be very interesting and like I say Amazon has the potential to severely cut the price in order to get people into their ecosystem of uh, services and products so uh, whether that's good for the end user, who can say? But uh, it certainly will result in in cheap hardware initially, I think. Interestingly, from being a more, more of an e-commerce company, I think increasingly we see Amazon as a server's giant because they allocate resources, especially the so-called cloud computing hype, uh, takes over and loads of people actually uh, have their stuff dedicated to the uh, clusters in Amazon. But increasingly now, you have Amazon working also as a, I wouldn't say a phone company, I don't think they have any reasons whatsoever to go into phones now, even though Dell is doing that, which is strange enough. Uh, but they, when, when they make the tablet with the browser and everything else, it kind of makes you wonder, you know, where is Amazon going in terms of, uh, you know, the company it used to be. Uh, even if you, you look at Apple, they changed the name of the company to better reflecting the fact that they were also doing things like music and film. Uh, you know, people downloading tracks of music and stuff um, from the internet, so they they have to change the image of the, the commercial image of the company. Um, one other thing I was going to mention: you mentioned something about trying to perceive the tablet more as a phone than a desktop, and I, I just I, I don't think that I don't think that the form factors of the um, uh, actually the main the main uh, catalyst here. I think it's actually the way we generally interact uh, with computers. That's what defines the devices we're willing to use. I mean, I, uh, my sister, she always uses Linux now, and she tells me quite it's just better. It just serves her better. And people say, you know, usually one of the, the, the talking points you'd hear from the uh, from the salesman of the salesman of Microsoft would be something, oh, you couldn't possibly afford to sell Linux to your customers because they don't have any applications for their platform. Now, look at the average users these days. I don't think many of them really launch many applications. I mean, no. they use Office, many of them. But but even the Office, if you look at children and different ages and stuff, I'm not sure many of them do this either. And most of them like are willing to explore something that's free on the internet. But if they can open a browser and they can uh, boot fast into a system and don't have to worry about antivirus, I think increasingly, increasingly that pushes more and more people to work in the browser. Uh, and this is the reason that we can afford now to have phones that don't have 
things compiled for them. So you could actually access Google Maps and everything on your phone. So it's kind of like you have an application that does, does things like mapping for you, but it's not really an application based on the based on pre-compiled code. It's just coming from you know it's just been running. If you get a good phone with good specifications, you can write in JavaScript and do all that in your you know, maybe. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I said before, I think the desktop form factor is largely dead now for the average mainstream consumer. I think we had this discussion a few episodes ago. Yeah, I, I think HP quitting the market is a... Yeah. I, I don't think... I, I think the reason why it's been popular in the home in the past is because really that was the only viable uh, solution for, for somebody. I mean, at one point, uh, laptops were hideously expensive and yeah. like, like for like, you could get a five times more powerful uh, desktop machine than you could a laptop. Yeah, so, you couldn't condense the same... I think we, instead of us building the computers to fit what we needed at the time, <clears throat> we had this constraint of the size of the keyboard, the size of the CPU, the size of the, size of the we used to do the CRTs, you remember? Mm. So we had these constraints, and we had to try and uh, convince ourselves this is how we prefer to work. Now, these days, you can make a very powerful, you know, our phones are more powerful than our old computers uh, in some ways. Uh, and, and, and one of the things we, we still try and do... Uh, in, in most cases, is try to adapt to. Uh, uh, it, it depends on the age as it's, well. It's, yeah, the younger people are very yeah. much. Aware to, uh, it's a different generation as well now. I mean, you look at these people that are texting on their phones with scrolling through letters with uh, you know, just a numeric uh, keypad on their on their mobile phone, and you see the speed in which to do that. And it's a new generation now that's got used to a, a different way of working. And I think the t the tablet form factor will be the the form factor of choice, mainly because another thing that people don't consider is space. There's very little space in people's houses now. Uh, there's, we have large televisions, we have uh, all these appliances, and people like the idea of a, a tablet that they can throw into a drawer and just pull out when they yeah. need it. And I think that has a lot of people. For people like myself and a lot of other people, I couldn't bear to live without the traditional keyboard and mouse. But yeah, probably... Because what, they still use the disc, they still use the cd rob sometimes. Oh yes, oh yes, very yeah. much so. Um, I, I, I don't feel some, something is being backed up unless it's physically in my hands um, on a shiny disc. Uh, so it's probably a, some sort of mental hang-up that I have. It's always some, somewhere physically stored. Uh, I, I actually suppose that that's no longer quite the case now because you've got all these uh, SD cards and things. Yeah, I don't trust those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't trust it. No. Nothing that small can be reliable is my uh, is my mindset. And I, I don't trust it. I, until I see it on my shiny <laughs> shiny silver disc, in a little cellophane uh, packet in one of the drawers, safe in a way. I don't believe it's been backed up, so uh, it's probably just a, a relic of, of previous computing experience. Yeah. Or if you, as long as you give, uh, we had this discussion before <coughs> about how you pass your old CDs to your friends of yours, to people in the family, mm -hmm. so just in case something happens, you know, things like fire, you still can access a person with an old copy of your. I mean, I make, I make that last comment with a wry smile on my face because I do remember being absolutely categorically convinced that my data was secure and safe when it was backed up on a three and a half inch floppy disk. And so, uh, probably another 10 years time, I'll be looking back at this time with the same wry smile. Um, but there, there you are. And it's, uh, yeah, like we we're saying, the, the tablet form factor I think has already got its foothold now and people, they are desirable products and uh, I hope the desktop won't go away and I always hope I've still uh, got my desktop for many years to come but uh, I can't even get on with a laptop to be fair. I take my netbook away when I'm on holiday or away from home but that's used out of sufferance and really is a means to an end. I, I can't get on with the small screen, I can't get on with the, the tiny keyboard, I need what I'm used to and that's my uh, my default generic uh, standard keyboard and mouse. In fact, I don't even like optical mice. Um, and I, I think I've said this before as well. I prefer the weight of an old, an old rollerball mouse. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's begrudgingly I um, I use the optical mice because uh, I can't buy a rollerball mouse in the shop. It's funny. I, I always use a mouse pad, even though I have optical oh. mice. But it does it does improve your. It depends on the it depends on the surface you usually use. If you use it in glass, for example, it doesn't work too well. So you have to use a pad. Oh. It works. I mean, this this works fine. I, I've got funnier. Here's a here's a little secret for people listening. I have a Bagpus um, mouse mat, and it works fine. There's no issue with it. It's just because of the weight of the the mouse itself. Sometimes I like to lift my fingers off and lift the mouse up a bit and tap it, and it just doesn't feel right when it's so light. So uh, maybe the solution is to weigh it down with something. I might feel a bit better. But uh, another relic <clears> of the old days. 
But yeah. Well, can I just can I just make a recommendation to anybody who had an Amiga computer? If you still have an Amiga computer and you've packed it away in your in your attic or whatever, go upstairs and uh, go and get it and get your mouse out and uh, compare it in weight to a modern mouse. You'd be actually surprised how heavy that mouse was, and it was a far more comfortable experience. Um,